If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and reread the problem before listening on. In part A, we need to determine the value of D that corresponds to a particular tension. In order to do that, let's examine a free body diagram of the beam. The first force that we can draw acting on the beam would be the weight, and since this is a uniform beam, that means the weight would be acting at the geometric center of the beam. So we will direct a force downward, we will label that W, and the question gives us the weight as equaling 500 newtons. In addition, we have a tension force because of the cable. The cable is pulling up and to the left on the beam in order to prevent it from spinning and accelerating. So here we have a tension force, and if we go back up to the question, the question notes that the least tension that will snap the cable is 1200 newtons. So we can label that tension on our free body diagram. Now it turns out that there are also forces acting on the beam over here, but we're going to find that we don't need to include those forces because we're going to be applying a torque analysis to the beam. When you apply a torque analysis to a beam or other similar structure, what you want to do is select a pivot point. Now perhaps in this question the most obvious pivot point would be right here, because if the cable snapped then the beam would rotate about that pivot. And if that's the pivot point right there, any forces that are acting on the beam at that pivot are not going to produce any torque. So even though, for example, there is a force that the wall exerts on the beam in this direction, we don't need to actually draw that because that force is going to produce zero torque. So the only forces we need to include are the tension and the weight force because those two forces are not passing through the pivot and therefore they will produce torque. Now we might want to label the length of the beam before we begin that torque analysis. And in addition we will label the angle between the tension force and the beam. We're going to call that angle theta. Now we begin the torque analysis and let us recall that torque is equal to the following equation. We're going to have r times the force times the sine of an angle, and we'll talk about that angle momentarily. Let us begin with the torque produced by the tension force. Now, the tension force is pulling on the beam as directed by that arrow, and you might want to pause the video and ask yourself, would the tension force cause the beam to rotate clockwise or counterclockwise? And hopefully you can see that the tension would tend to cause the beam to rotate in a counterclockwise direction. So because it's counterclockwise torque, then the tension's torque is going to be positive. So we would take the tension force, T, and we're going to multiply that by the sine of the angle, which we do not know yet. And then we're going to multiply by R. Now R is a particular distance, and it's basically the distance from where the tension is acting to the pivot point. So if you look at where the tension is acting all the way over to the pivot point, that distance would be L. So altogether, it's going to be L times T times the sine of theta. We can next look at the torque produced by the weight force. Now, the weight force is pushing down on the beam. And again, you might want to pause the video, ask yourself which direction would that weight force cause the beam to rotate, counterclockwise or clockwise. And we can see that it would cause the beam to rotate in a clockwise direction. Clockwise would be negative torque. So we're going to say minus, and then we're going to take that weight force of W, multiply it by the sine of an angle. Now, in this case, the angle between the weight force and the beam is 90 degrees. The weight is acting perpendicularly to the beam, so that angle will be 90 degrees. And then finally, the distance r, and the distance from the weight force to the pivot point is this distance right here. That distance is half of the length of the beam, so that would be L divided by two. Now, because this beam is in equilibrium, the sum of the torques must equal zero. So we can safely set this equation equal to zero, and we're going to try to solve for the tension, excuse me, we're going to try to solve for the angle theta, because that is what is unknown. Now, you might notice that if we divide each term of the equation by the length L, we can actually cancel it out. So doing that cancels the L here, it cancels the L there, and then zero divided by L is still zero on the right-hand side. Do be careful, though, that when you cancel the L at this L divided by two, that's still going to leave a one in the numerator. So let's just rewrite the equation accordingly. We would have the tension times the sine of theta minus one-half, there's that one, W. The sine of 90 is one. You can verify that on a calculator, so we don't even need to write that in here. So again, we're trying to solve for the angle theta, 
And we can perhaps add the one half W to the other side and then divide both sides by the tension. And now we can plug in the known values for W and T. If we simplify the right hand side, we have the sine of theta is equal to about 0.208. And then you take the inverse sine to solve for theta. So we'll take the inverse sine of that decimal and make sure your calculator is in degree mode. And when you do that, you would see that theta is approximately 12.0 degrees. Now we still haven't solved for D, but now we can because we have that angle theta. If we go back to our picture, we can see that we have ourselves a right triangle. So we'll just redraw it on the side for clarity. This is D, we know this is L, and then we just figured out that angle theta. And we can see from this right triangle that the tangent of our angle theta is going to equal the opposite divided by the adjacent. Multiply both sides by L, you have L tangent theta is equal to D. Now the length of the beam was given in the question, it was three meters, and then we can go ahead and plug in theta. And simplifying the, this expression gives us an answer of approximately 0.64 meters. So this is the value of D. This is the correct answer to part A of the question. Let's go and read part B, which asks us to prevent the cable from snapping, should D be increased or decreased from that value? And perhaps to answer that, we can go back and look for the equation that involved the tension. Let's check out this equation right here. And the question is asking about the tension snapping, so or the cable snapping, excuse me. Why don't we isolate this for the tension? So to do that, we would add the half W and then divide by sine theta. So we have this relationship here for tension. Now we don't want the tension to exceed 1200 newtons. So if anything, we would like it to be smaller than or equal to 1200 newtons. Now, if you want to reduce the value of tension in order to prevent it from rupturing, then you'd actually want to increase the value of the denominator. Remember by dividing by a larger number, then your result would be smaller. So to get a smaller tension, we want a larger denominator. So we basically want to make the sine of theta larger. But to make the sine of theta larger means that we want to make theta larger. So let's go back to that right triangle that we drew before. We drew it something like this, in which this was D and this was L and this was theta. Now, we just concluded that we want theta to get bigger. So if you make theta bigger, and that might make the triangle look something like that, so we made that angle right there a larger angle, and we can see that the value of D goes up. So to conclude part B, we would wish for the value of D to increase in order to prevent the cable from snapping.